Welcome back to Fodra Adventure Crew. My name is Voss and we come to you live from Rubicon Trailhead. I got my son Mark out here on his Jeep. We're gonna go destroy this thing before we build it up more. So it's very windy right now. We're gonna start the trail, get in the, in the shade somewhere where it's not windy and uh, talk to Mark about his uh, plans. But we have a good group of Jeeps and Toyotas that is joining us on this adventure so stay tuned it's going to be windy but we'll make it through we're going in only for a day trip so about to ellis bridge and back so let's hit the road So we're here with Mark and his uh, 1990 Jeep XJ, aka the hand-me-down Jeep. So Mark, what are we doing today? Uh, we are going from the Loon Lake entrance to Whitmore uh, to Ellis Bridge, having lunch and going to the Whitmore Springs entrance. What did you bring today? I brought my 1990 Jeep XJ. It is on 32s with stock gearing. It has the CAD front axle, which is the weakest axle made, and a Dana 35 rear. It is sitting on a four and a half inch lift with, uh, we got 32s. 32s. You think you can make it? Yeah, I got an LSD in the rear, so. That's all you need? Yeah. And a working winch? Yep. All right, well, we got a big group with us, so we're gonna tag in and uh, keep rolling. All right, let's go. So Mark been to Rubicon multiple times uh, as a passenger, and uh, he's been we've been going to Rubicon since 2018, and uh, it's been of many years, and now he gets to drive it all by himself, and uh, basically on his own rig, because uh, he built it last year. I gave it to him. It's been sitting in my possession since 2019 and now he grew up old enough to where he can work on it he built everything himself um, took all my hand-me-down parts that I had left over from my Jeep or in other Jeeps that we have around and uh, built it up all for himself so we have more upgrade uh, plans for this Jeep but right now we want to see how he can run it with the uh, 32s no lockers just an LSD and the weakest axles he can have under the Jeep and we'll see what happens. We're only going about a mile and a half, or a mile and a quarter in to Ellis Bridge. Then we're gonna turn around and drive out to Wetward Springs Road, which is a second entrance to the Rubicon, which is uh, less popular. But um, we just wanted to do a little day trip today. And a bunch of friends joined us on this little adventure because uh, we haven't been out in a while. Uh, but it needs we need to have a change of scenery a little bit because uh, working on the house uh, and uh, property it's going to be non-stop for the next few years but we need to you know change uh, scenery once in a while and get out and camp just didn't think uh, that it's going to be this windy today we camped last night uh, not too far away from the trailhead and uh, it's been pretty windy and cold so but it's still fire restrictions out here so don't come out here and start fires, especially with this north wind. This is when big fires can start. All right, looks like uh, traffic up ahead is moving, so let's keep on going. We're coming up on the gatekeeper. We'll uh, see how everybody will do.
Mark is making it through the gatekeeper, and if he makes it through the gatekeeper, it means he can do everything else. But he is following me each step of the way, even though his tires are smaller. He can make it. Looks like his rear slid. Beautiful. Mark, straight, straighten up. So, so, so. Nazat, shoot and bump it. Right there. Just bump it. Yep, you're good. So, Mark, you made it through the gatekeeper. What do you think? That seemed easy. I don't know. I'm not trying to jinx anything. Okay, well, but... it is a lot of rock stacks since last time we were here yeah. in the in the in the spring. So There's probably a lot of 400s on 31s coming through here. Yep. All right, let's keep rolling. We had some recent rains here, and uh, yeah, the trail is showing. The fall season on the trail is amazing, and as you probably seen us do Rubicon in the fall before it's the best time to do the trail if you've never done it it is cold but it's really nice today is just very windy and uh, we're into the gatekeeper forest here so it's a lot of big rocks here so we just gotta watch mark make sure he doesn't get hung up on anything but there's a lot of rocks that have been stacked over the summer for people to get through easier and I think that's pretty much what it's showing us. Oof. Doc, where should we go? We should go this way. Take it wide. Yep. Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of water here. What's up? Okay, good. Come this way, Mark. Uh, let's stop at the top of the slabs. Well, we made it to the slabs. All of our group is uh, here. It's a little bit less windy up here. Huh? It, it chipped a little bit. Tail light? Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna get the clear ones anyways. Ah, we'll have to build the metal ones. Yeah. Yes, little guy. Check my gas tank on that one. <laughs> hard. A little dent, you're okay. Yeah, yeah, go out, good. Uh, so yeah, this little Jeep can make it. If it made it through the gatekeeper with no lockers, it can make it through the Rubicon. It's just gonna be a lot slower than normal. And uh, if you guys wanna know more about the Rubicon, you gotta follow this guy. <laughs> Boom. He'll teach you all the lessons about Rubicon because he is part of the RTF guy. So, yep. All right, we're doing a little regroup and we'll keep going. Let's move away from the traffic. One nice rig. One of the presidents of the RTF property. Man. Pretty cool. All right, looks like there's a lot more people coming. Time to clear the slabs and keep on going. Beautiful day on the Rubicon. And over the years, 
you come and every time you come something is different some obstacles get harder some obstacles get easier it's just uh, it's never the same it's never the same okay this looks like this is a flexi turn The three-wheel drive corner. I don't know how Mark will do with no lockers. Mark, hold on. Let's see, three wheel, three, wheel, three wheel action. Yep, come on. Yep, yep, Mark, too much steering. Too much steering. No, too much steering. Back up. Right there, straighten up. Keep it, keep it more straight, yeah, right there, go. Now turn, now turn. Not bad. It's okay, turn, 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 driver. There you go. Keep going. Again, too much steering. You're gonna break that U-joint. Okay, go around me a little real quick. Look at this thing. Like nothing. Like nothing, man. Woo! <laughs> Take it easy. Yep, you're good. The slabs are with some water in it, which is pretty cool. You can kind of tell where the water is coming when it's raining up here. I haven't been here in the heavy rainstorm, but I've been here in the rain and the rocks are still grippy in the rain. So it's not slick rocks. They're granite rocks, but they hold pretty good.
on that spot you can break a drive shaft if you're not careful or axle shaft and uh, we decided to go around on the little bypass and on the gra uh, granite here there's plenty of uh, different routes different lines you can take so we just took the line that suited our vehicles and uh, without breaking anything because we're trying to see if uh, Jeep on 32s can make it without any you know major assistance and uh, you know, 15 year old can drive it out all by himself, no problem. So far he's doing very good. It's all about placement of the tires. Yep. So far our group is doing well, but it's just super windy, super windy. Alright, we're going to wait for everybody to regroup up top of this ridge. All right, Mark, all those years of experience on my Jeep, how, how's your Jeep performing so far? Uh, the years of experience on your Jeep paid off a lot. That obstacle, to be real, I was kind of scared of it coming into this trail because uh, I, what is called, couldn't do it on my dad's Jeep. And I'm like, if I couldn't do it on my dad's Jeep, how's this Jeep going to do? But it went over it just fine. I think just a little more of experience that, uh, that I had helped me on that obstacle. How's your... Uh Two-legged uh, um, pedaling. Two-legged pedaling. Uh, yeah, using two pedals with if you don't have uh, lockers helps a lot. Yep. All right. Well, we're on top of the ridge. It's very windy, and uh, yeah. Woo! Pretty good though. This little thing is gonna make it. It's gonna make the whole loop that we're doing today. Alex, how you doing on Toyota today? Good. Good. I like it. Did you check your uh, little plug underneath this time? You, you see what I fixed? Oh, no, hold on, let's see. So Alex has been having issues. Uh, every time he goes to Rubicon, he loses his plug. Plug. Oh, wow, okay. See? I see an under. Okay, that's see? the way to fix it. This one, yep, this one. Yep. Nice skid plates, everything. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> well, hopefully you'll, soon you're going to go to bigger tires, right? <laughs> yeah. Bigger tires. We're over to the whale bones obstacle. What's your plan going up it? I'm gonna take it, uh, probably more driver, I mean passenger gonna try and you go and go steeper and just keep going straight up probably do that one we'll see if my tires slip if my tires slip I'll have to go to the less of a steep climb all right well remember when you go to the top you go straight and then turn to the right because you're not gonna be able to see anything when you're going up so all right well let's check out what we got in the lineup we got a JL John and JL me and my Rocklander crew chief, Mark on the hand-me-down. How you guys doing today? Good. good. Having fun? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you got a full car in there. Beautiful. I got a cranky passenger. Out of all people here, the most, the person that, well, not the person, the one that's fighting the most is my dog. Can you Aww. believe it? <laughs> 
Well, it's probably one. Well, yeah, he wants to grow out and run, but it's too cold to be out there and running. Normally, we have a lot of people hiking the trail while we're wheeling, but today it's just too cold. Yeah. All right. Well, we're having fun. That's good. Yep. Just a little bit. We're gonna have lunch and then go to a different tra different entrance. Awesome. Yeah. I don't think you ever been there, huh? No, I never actually. Been there. Well, the furthest we went was to up to that lake. Was that lake? Uh, Buck Island. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That was the bridge. All right. Well. All right, let me check in with everybody else. All right, we got another JL. This one's a uh, stock. That's a recon edition on stock 35s. Then we have a JK, non Rubicon. We got Ian on the ZJ, Alex on the Forerunner, and we got our buddy on the TJ. We made it to the split, so we're gonna be after lunch, we're gonna go, be going down that road. But from Loon Lake, we drove 1.5 miles and we gotta go another uh, quarter mile to the Ellis Bridge. And that's where we're gonna have lunch, uh, relax a little bit, turn around. We're almost uh, to our lunch spot and it's uh, about 11, uh, yeah, about 11.15 or 11.30 this morning. So not bad. Only uh, took us about uh, two hours or so with stops and everything. Probably less, but should be a pretty nice, easy day. All right, we made it to Ella's Bridge and uh, we're just stopping here for our lunch. There's people out there camping in that camp spot we were when we were out here in June, uh, but Ella's Bridge is right there. Bathrooms here, creek, water, so you can wash your hands and uh, overall, but overall it's pretty good. So Mark, what'd you think of this whole trip so far? So far, so good. It does just fine on all the rocks, so. That's yeah. good. Means uh, you assembled a pretty good Jeep from all the hand-me-down parts. We don't have our kitchen with us. To Costco specials. And, uh, today we're doing pizzas for lunch. <laughs> so you take your Costco pizza, you put it on the foil, wrap it up with the foil, nice and tight. Then the corner is over. Toss it on the grill. And your winners are ready. Move them. They take. They they weren't cooked. They weren't here. cooked. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna move your wieners so I can put some pieces. Just touch them gently. All right. So I don't want them spilling. All right. That's it. And then we'll wait ten minutes. So after you pull the pizzas out, they're nice and toasty. The bread is not dried up and it's nice. It tastes good. You know. Very. Really quick meal. We had a little bit of lunch and uh, now we are getting ready to start heading out and back towards pavement, but we're going to take uh, Wetward Springs Road, which is the old Rubicon entrance as I understand. But uh, yeah, it's going to take us out different way, which is I haven't been there in a few years. It'll be interesting to see what has changed. All right, I'm going to follow Mark for a little bit, kind of let him 
drive his own lines and I'll just follow. So far he's doing very good. All those years of experience on the trail and going at different trails, driving my Jeep everywhere since he was like 14, 13, that's great. Knows how to handle a vehicle on the trail. Yeah. This looks like a Jeep Safari on the Rubicon. Look how many cars we got up ahead. Man, we can make a crowd. Yep, that's what happens when you uh, follow us on Facebook. We post indiscreetly that we're going somewhere and people see it, they join us. So you better follow if you want to get on one of these trips one day. On this side of the trail, you got this pretty cool placard of uh, El Dorado Jeep Herders Club adopted the trail in 1984 and they have this metal placard on the rock it's pretty cool we're dipping below the loon lake dam we can see the loon lake entrance straight up ahead but uh yeah it's a bunch of slabs in between here and uh this trail is moving there i mean we're moving very slow through the trail because there's a big uh steps everywhere a couple big rocks and we have a pretty good sized group, so we're just taking it easy, taking it slow, trying not to break anything to uh, make it out of here in one piece.
All right, we're making it all the way out. We're coming up on a campground at the Wetward Springs campground that is right before the trail. We took a couple different routes. There's a lot of ways you can go in some places. And uh, Mark took a harder line than we did. We went behind everybody through the bypasses and uh, easier uh, lines, trails. But we are now to the uh, campground. We're gonna do a little rest, bathroom break, and uh, head out to pavement. Inflate our tires and then uh, we're gonna head home. So overall, it was a pretty good day. It's uh, 2 p.m. We started our trail at 9.45 is when we hit the Loon Lake entrance. And uh, now we are out, out of the trail system, but we're not out to pavement. The pavement's another uh, three, four miles till we get to pavement. So, but overall, it was a really good trip. All right, so we made it out to the campground. And uh, Mark, so what do you think? How, how did your Jeep perform on this whole trip? Uh, a lot, a lot better than I thought it would perform. These 32s, they can handle some stuff. Uh, the LSD saved me in a lot of spots. I did bang up the axle and steering a little bit on some of the obstacles because it sits a little low, but other than that, it did, it did very well. That's good. So what, the mission's accomplished. We uh, set out to see if uh, a 15 year old can drive his Jeep on a Rubicon with 32s and no lockers. And if we would continue the whole day, I think you would be struggling, but I think you'd still be able to make it because uh, I didn't think you struggled at all in any of these uh, obstacles that we had. So really good. So we're gonna start packing up and head back out to pump our tires. All right, we're back, back out to pavement. It was an awesome day. So Jeep on 32s with the weakest axles you can have in the Jeep. Can't do the Rubicon. We just can't know how long it will last. But in our two some miles that we did today, it lasted pretty good. My son's doing very good off-roading. So hopefully he's gonna get his license soon. And then we'll be able to go out and do more adventures together on our family rigs. I got pretty much everybody into Jeeps now. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next adventure or another uh, property update. We'll see. But we got a lot of things we need to do. So, I'm not sure when we're going to be back out. But we'll be back out soon. See ya.